You are looking at a dollar store bag from the Dollarama store. Why are you looking at a dollar store bag from the Dollarama store? Because that's what the camera is pointing at. But more to the point, what's underneath said dollar store bag from the Dollarama store? What's it whole what's it covering up? Well, all in due time, eventually. Anyways, I'm recording this introduction to this video you're about to watch because the video you're about to watch was recorded about six years ago, more or less as part of a Christmas thing that was done six years ago. And I wanted to isolate this one bit into a larger bit, into its own bit, instead of being a small bit of a larger bit, but never got around to it until now. So there you go. So it'll be something to hold you over before we get some proper, more recent stuff, which I'm hoping we'll pick up this week. So yeah, that's it. So enjoy the show, I guess. Later. Before we get to our so-called main event, I want to show you a couple other items in relation to this. First off, I'm going to show you my Yobo FC Twin SNES NES clone system that I bought back in October of 2007. It's the system that got me on the collecting kick, so to speak, and uh, well, basic console really. 8-bit NES, 16-bit NES, and the corresponding uh, light lights up. The reset button, your NES slot, your SNES slot, complete with tabs. So if you want it, you have to find a workaround. If you want to play Super Famicom, which is unfortunate, you have your AV composite output. So a standard wire would do, and you have your DC int put. English, we like that. Anyways, pretty standard uses SNES controllers for both the SNES and NES sides which meant B is A, Y is jump and the controllers that came with this thing uh, had its own turbo functionality for the buttons anyways uh, it's the console that I use more the most often it still works after nine years of uh, a little over nine years next year will be ten years that I've had this thing and if it lasts that long well it's better than my buddy's 360, which crapped out about a couple months after he bought it back in 2006. But that's a joke that's been rammed in the ass to the ground, beaten like a dead horse, whatever overplayed analogy you want to go. We're going to set this aside. This is the NES, this is the NES clone that I play with a lot. Uh, if you've seen some of my past reviews and stuff like that, you've seen this because you know most of the footage came from this. But, like most clone systems, compatibility with certain games, notably Castlevania 3, is an issue. And while I do have an original NES, the toaster model, it's hooked up elsewhere. Earlier this year, I got this, top-loading NES, which I've been looking for for years. Now I have one. Power switch, reset button. NES slots, so you have no blinking light issues, but there are no lights to be blinking, so it doesn't really matter. Standard your controller ports, your AC adapter, your RF thing, so you you plug in your gray box. I use a simple wire with an adapter, which is basically the same wire that I use for my Atari 7800, my Sega Master System, my ColecoVision. It eliminates the need for any box, and the picture quality is adequate at least for my needs no AV composite which is unfortunate some people would mod this thing or some people will get one of those uh, AT monologue or whatever the fuck it's called the one with the space age metal and limerick or cheese uh, for me personally something like this as long as the picture's fine and it's crisp and I don't want to say crisp but as long as it's suitably clear I'm happy with it so I don't mind the little lines. Look, the lines here are a little more pronounced, as you'll see later on, but uh, this suited me just fine. In any event, <laughs> now we're going to get to our main event after a uh, little under four minutes of padding. This is the Retron that I bought about a couple of weeks ago because it was dirt cheap. And also, I was curious to see if uh, if it had gotten any me any better. 
a spoiler it hasn't but work with me here anyways the reason I picked this up or cheap mind you uh, you probably are you're probably familiar with the NES classic edition plug-and-play thing the, the new hot thing that Nintendo sent about three units to each store and it's sold out and everybody's talking about it and it's on eBay for like 500 bucks or whatever the case may be so uh, yeah the flea market had it the yeah the flea merchant that I go to I, I hate to call it because he's a nice guy but he had a couple units for about a couple hundred bucks I didn't pick it up because fuck it uh, too rich for my blood let's put it that way but uh, the one thing he told me that I thought was interesting was that since the NES Classic Editions were kind of hard to find, he's been selling a lot of Retrons. And you know, for each Retron that he bought, he sold, he also sold a copy of one of these, which you may have seen a couple times. It's a Super Games 150 in 1. It is a multi-cart with 150 uh games high quality games i guess you could say uh it's got the rockman it's got the ninja turtle games it's got the ninja guidance uh castlevania's one and two the super mario brothers a couple gi joe games a couple uh ducktales and darkwing duck and uh, some of the natsume games and you know really really quality stuff it's not like the other multi carts where you have a bunch of obscure famicom games nobody's ever heard of it's it's good quality games that I'm pretty sure you're familiar with, although there's just a couple of Japanese games in there too, so it's not all bad, but mostly games that, you know, you would normally find loose for, you know, crazy expensive prices, you could find them here, and, uh, yeah, so he's been selling this and that, you know, as a package for, you know, he's been selling quite a few of them, so, uh, I don't know, I figured pick one up and... Hey, if nothing else, I figure if nothing else, it might make for a fun little video. And, uh, hey, hopefully <laughs> it ends up being part of a Christmas special, or lack thereof. Anyways, let's look at the box, because that's what we do with these things. When there's a box, we look at the boxes. That's the hot thing these days on YouTube. Retron FC Loader Game Console. Plays US 8-bit NES cartridges compatible with all NES controllers. Slow and turbo functions. Play all your classic NES favorites, except Castlevania 3. Spoilers. Yeah, so, uh, <laughs> that sucked the wind out of that. Okay, Retron, FC Loader, play your classic NES. Contents, console, two controllers, AV cable, AC adapter, Hyperkin. The same folks that brought you that, uh, what is it, the FC, uh, the FC thing? That, or whatever it is, the, the Retron 5? They have a bunch of Retron stuff. Retron 2, Retron 3, Retron 5. I've never had a Retron 5. Never really cared. Anyways, I digress. Here for display module. This goes to the TV. That's your power. That's your things. Your displays and the two controllers. We'll get to that later. You have your text blurb. Play all your favorite classic NES. Blah, 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 blah. I assume you people know how to read. If not, there's Espanol. Is there Rosanna en Francais? Anyways, uh, got Hyperkin, nice, uh, nice embossing. You know, couple logos, please recycle. Sure will. Uh, is this some copyright 2016 Hyperkin? Your barcodes and scan for instruction manual. You don't need to come with an instruction man. We don't need to scan for instruction manual. Comes with uh, the instruction manual right here. A little piece of paper, a little flyer. Uh, Pretty much the same thing in the back of the box. There's an additional diagram here telling you how to insert the game cartridge. That's always important. Using the Retron controllers. Here's the same thing on Espanol. Or actually, no, this is on Francais. Sorry. That's what happens when you're looking at the viewfinder and not the piece of paper that's right in front of you. And the same thing on Espanol, and, and then you have more copyright fluff and. Uh, that's completely. That's that's totally worth scanning the thing on your phone, right? Get out of here. Anyways, uh, I would do a fancy unboxing, but I already opened the box up and tried the thing out, so I already know the end result. So, anyways, let's just get that crap out of the way. Box 
just goes in the corner. Anyways, that's the console itself. It's uh, the same generic FC thing. This thing, way back in the day, <laughs> was being put out by the same people that made this thing, Yobo. Except, so it's a fairly generic NES clone, Famiclone, NES on a chip thing. Uh, no visible screws, I'm sure they're, they're probably under the feet. Or maybe you could, you know, pry it open with this thing. I'm not going to do that because I spent money on this thing to play that. Not, I'm sure if you look in there. But, uh, anyways. As I'm just fumbling here. Anyways, your two controller ports, so you can play your NES game systems, your NES controllers and stuff like that. Your power switch, your reset switch, your AV mono AV cables, and your uh, power outlet, your power supply goes there. Retron, rating 6 volts, 200 MA stuff, and made in China. So, that's a thing. Anyways, here's a controller. Uh, not a fan of the controllers, to be honest with you. Uh, but in any event, your B button, your A button, your your uh, floating directional pad here, your select button, your start button, your slow button, your uh, turbo B, your turbo A, or double B, double A. Double AR and Anderson or something, I don't know. A couple bumps here in the back. So it's added comfort. I guess that's the theory. Because see, the idea is they're trying to they're trying to replicate this, right? This is a standard NES controller. You know, it's it's the classic NES controller. That's the nicest thing I got to say. And, uh, yeah. Just be because it worked for a couple consoles, the Master System had a similar... Well, actually, the, the, the Atari 700. And I have an Atari 700 joypad, or gamepad, or whatever. Fuck, pro line, the pro pads, whatever, something. Anyways. Not a fan of these controllers. But when Yobo was making these... They had controllers that looked like this. And uh, you know, the D-pad's a little better. And uh, it's it's rounded. So it's more it's somewhat like a Super Nintendo or if you want a, a closer NES analogy, the old dog bone controllers. That's probably not the right analogy, but I like the buttons are a little more concave and, 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 and you know, they, they feel a bit it feels a bit nicer. Mind you, this all feels cheap really fucking cheap but you know, this feels somewhat nicer and I don't know why they dropped this design in favor of this anyways so anyways this is the cable it came with it, 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 fine and this is your power adapter which eh, anyways um, anyway so uh, we're gonna hook this up I guess for lack of a for some reason and uh, I'm gonna pick out a game Normally I would pick out Super Mario Brothers, but in this age of Nintendo losing their shit and content IDing anything that breathes Super Mario, uh, we're going to have to pick something else. So, uh, bear with me for about five seconds as I switch from Live Shot to, I don't know, whatever game I decide to pick eventually. We're actually going to do the same game three times, one being on the original... I don't want to say the original NES, but one on this thing, because it's the closest thing to an original NES and genuine hardware. Then we're going to do the FC Twin. And then finally we'll do the Hyperkin Retron and see if uh, the formula has gotten any better. Uh, spoiler, it hasn't, but again, humor me. Oh, by the way, this came in various colors, the gray colored and stuff like that. I chose this because it resembled... I guess it resembled the Famicom colors. Although most Famicoms these days would be, uh... Rambling. Cue the footage. 
So we're going to start off with the top-loading NES, the official model from Nintendo that was introduced during a console's waning years as sort of an alternative, lower-cost alternative to the aging toaster that everyone knows and loves. Nowadays, this unit is a little harder to find, and there's a fairly good chance you might have to pay a pretty penny for it if you want to find this particular unit. And while there are some advantages over the original toaster, the top-loading design being the obvious one, it nonetheless has some drawbacks, the most notable of which being there's no AV composite output like the original unit has. Instead, it's the classic hookup where you need an RF modulator box thing to get your picture onto a TV antenna or whatever the case may be. In my case, I'm just using a simple adapter that circumvents the box altogether and I just plug it straight to the VCR, which then goes to DVD and then that goes straight to the TV, and for the most part, the picture quality is not bad. It's serviceable, it might not be everyone's cup of tea, but for my needs it's just fine. The sound's a bit muffled, there's faint lines on the screen, which might be due to a weak signal or whatever the case may be, but nonetheless, you know, it's not a bad picture overall. The sound's alright for the most part, not bad for RF, I think. You know, honestly, I have no complaints. Your mileage may vary, of, of course. Uh, I'll give you a bit of audio before moving on to the next subject on our list. Next up, we have the Yovo FC Twin clone system, the 2-in-1 clone system that I bought back in October of 2007. It's my go-to clone system for a number of years, and it still works to this very day. How can you tell? Because I was able to record this video in 2016. The first thing you'll notice about the FC Twin is that there are lines that are very visible on screen, even more so than what you get on the top-loading NES, and if these lines bother you, this is probably not the system for you. But setting that piece of business aside, if you were to look past the lines, and I certainly was if I was using this thing for a number of years, you'll find that the colors match up fairly well with the NES side, the top loading at least. The sound quality is a little crisper, or a little clearer I would say, less muffled, due to this being on AV output, really standard AV composite cable, nothing special required. Uh, there's some technical bits that obviously keeps this from being a top choice, the compatibility being one of them, and the lines being another thing, and there's some bits and bobs, but that's irrelevant for purposes of this video. For the purposes of this video, the sound quality is good, the colors are greatly c cloned and replicated and all that jazz, and uh, you know, like I said, this was my go-to for a number of years and I still play it to this very day. In fact, I might play a couple more games on this thing later on. So I'll leave you with some audios before we get to our main attraction, the Retron 1 version 2016, or whatever the case may be. And so here we are, this is the Retron that I just bought a short while ago. Copyright 2016, and look at what happened to the colors. What the fuck happened to the colors, man? Jesus Christ! <laughs> oh fucking hell, this is terrible! God damn it, game chip! The first thing you'll note is the annoying buzzing noise in the background. That plays constantly throughout the game, and unfortunately that's the thing you're stuck with. So that's one thing they haven't fixed from the older model. The other thing they haven't fixed is the sound fidelity. Here, have a listen to Cutman being butchered for a few seconds before I ramble some more. And that's enough of that. Clearly, with all the FC twins and retro duels, they had a chance to use this updated NES clone chip thing, whatever they're using, and put it on the base models, but I guess that's outside their budgets, and it's cheaper just to come out with the shit version. And speaking of shit, what happened to the colors? It just... There's no contrast, you know, grays or whites, you know, greens or pukes, and everything feels look like, like blurry, and, and just, you know... Ugh, just really, really bad and really ugly. And, uh... Wow. Just wow. I mean, mind you, I, I get that this is a cheap throwaway toy. It's only like a few 10, 20 bucks, but still... Wow. That, that's, that's, that's bad. That's really bad. Uh, yeah, better... Ugh. God, God, fucking awful, man. Sorry. But, like, I'm, I'm not even angry. To be honest with you, I'm not even angry, I'm just shocked. 
that, you know. Anyways, let's go back to a live shot for some closing thoughts or whatever you want to call it. And that was the Hyperkin Retron FC Superloader, which is in my hand and not plugged in. Because I have a proper top-loading NES now. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, so that was a fun experiment, for lack of a better term. Retron. Made in China. Mm. Uh, I wonder if it's worth taking this thing apart to see what the, what the innards look like. I'm sure you could find some images on YouTube or Google or whatever. Uh, so I'm sure I'm sure somebody's already opened this up and I'm sure not much has changed over the years because uh, you know, it is cheap. Let's get that out of the way. It is cheap but uh, and it comes in a variety of colors. I got the white and red because it's almost Famicom colors. Although Famicom would probably be like an off-white or puke yellow like the top loading NES I have over there but uh, for you know for that accurate color scheme but I guess not this is fine too it's a it's a it's a nice little thing it's a cute little thing look at that it's so cute how could it do any wrong plenty as it turns out um, yeah uh, yeah some would suggest this is a waste of money and in some respects I would agree in other respects, and most notably my purchasing of the thing, I was kind of curious. And, uh, you know, like I said, at the top of the program, uh, the guy I go to to buy stuff usually sells this with that. Because people can't get the classic NES series thing. And, you know, this isn't a bad deal. You know, 150 games in one. I've, I've heard that there's, there's, a, there's actually a variant with 400 games. But I'm a little... I don't know, I haven't seen those around, and I'm a little hesitant in wanting to get that, because usually when you add more games to a thing, there's always the chance of repeats or some of the games being hot garbage, but this, with that, apparently is a pretty good deal for people who can't find a classic NES, NES Classic Edition, whatever the fuck you call it. The thing that Nintendo only released about five per location and now it's sold out and hitting hot prices on eBay and whatever the fuck it is. Anyways. Yeah, so this is a good deal. You know, like I said, not going to go, th you know, not going to turn this into a sales pitch because I bought it. I didn't get anything for free. I get, I rarely get stuff for free. So anything I say, you know, I don't know. Anyways. <laughs> Yeah, uh, anyways, I did, you know, I, you know, despite my shock at the performance, I was happy with this, for the most part. If nothing else, it gave me some video material to work with, or lack thereof, and, uh, it's always nice for a guy gift, I guess. You know, the controllers aren't that great either, but controllers I've put aside, and Anyways, I've put this aside too. This is nothing more than a paperweight now. Though, one of these days I might give it a go. And, and I don't know. We, I could probably use it for like a gag video or something. So I don't know. Anyways. Happy I got this. Pleased that I got this. If only for the video content. And who knows. Uh, maybe if I go completely bonkers and go on an NES clone purchasing spree somewhere down the line, it'd be a great opportunity to update that one video that I did a couple years ago. And, uh, yeah. We'll see. So, uh, yeah, that was a Hyperkin Retron on a whole. Yeah, just get yourself a proper NES if you have a collection going. And if not... Well, I don't know. Hello, it's me again from the future. Sorry about the mess and the clutter and stuff. Anyways, just to add a, a bit of an addendum to sort of make up for the fact that you just watched a six-year-old video. I had I bought this a couple years ago for whatever reason. It's the Re Retron HD 
it's basically the same thing as the Retron 1 thing that you just saw, except this one has HDMI output, as you can see. And in theory, it's supposed to give you like a 720p high quality picture. Now, the good news is it would give you that, right? Plug it straight to the TV, it would give me a nice little picture of uh, your, the, your game in action. The problems that persisted with the old Retron still apply, but it was a better picture, like the colors were a little better and all that. Trying to plug, plug this straight to the TV, picture came out perfectly fine. Try to plug this to my capture device, pain in the ass to try to get together. So I set it aside and then one day I decided, hey, why not give this another try, try to plug it in wouldn't power on and then you know figured out why the uh, micro USB connector fell inside uh, snapped off and uh, yeah oops won't be using this for a while <laughs> oops <laughs> I guess we won't be running this thing anymore oh well yeah well the Retron HD and Oh, there's a switch. You could switch between PAL and uh, NTSC. I didn't know that. Oh, oh well. And, uh, that's too bad. This one had a bit of weight to it. And uh, I gave the other one away eventually. So, uh, and I just got this. And, well, one wonders if that would have stuck around. Mind you, if that would have had a proper connector. But that's beside the point. So, uh, yeah, I wanted to do like a little bonus thing and show off a bit of the the HD version, but uh, unfortunately that's not possible and I'm no good with soldering and shit, so this is basically a paperweight. And there's a bit of weight to it at least, so it's not going to be a completely useless paperweight. Sorry everyone, but I do want to show you one more thing. You've already seen this. It's my FC Twin clone system bought it back in 2007 about 15 years old motherfucker still works just saying thanks for watching good night bye